season's greetings. Thank you for being here. I'm Johanna and I'm here to talk about books. It's that time of year when winter is just starting to creep in. People are deciding whether or not to don their winter coats, put on the heat. Some slightly unhinged people have already brought out their Christmas decor. Is it hot chocolate season yet? Yes, as of today. <laughs> Anyway, as I was saying, I myself have not turned on the heat yet. Instead, I've taken to, first of all, wearing super warm, cozy sweaters, as well as scarves around the house, which for some reason makes me feel like I belong in a 90s rom-com starring Sandra Bullock or Meg Ryan. Today, though, I'm relying on the heat of the mirror candle, just like the poor Bob Cratchit. <laughs> festive classic, A Christmas Carol. Which brings me to the subject of this video. Today, I have for you an extremely special list of books that are perfect to read in the winter. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, A Christmas Carol, how original. But that, my friends, is just the crowning jewel on top of this scrumptiously curated list. We have thrilling, adventurous nonfiction we have novels that will suck you in and leave you stunned. We have chilling, nail-biting horror. <laughs> and yes, we have a couple wonderfully cozy classics that simply could not be excluded from this list. When the sky goes icy gray and snow starts falling lazily past the window and your blankets and your hot water bottle are calling out to you, that is when you are going to want to pick up one of these books. Of course, alas, it only snows about once a year here in London, at which time the park becomes a relatively creepy cemetery of snow people in various sizes and stages of griminess, but it echoes with joyous laughter all around. Despite my lack of winter wonderland and the fact that a crackling fireplace can only be found in the confines of my television, you best believe I'm going to be indulging in some beautifully wintry reads, which I will share in my upcoming winter TBR video. For now though, let's have a look at the list of books that I personally recommend you read this winter. Don't go away. Starting off strong with the unique, the underrated, the extraordinary Early Riser by Jasper Ford. I discovered this book last winter and I loved it so, so much that I'm going to read it again this year and I cannot wait. Part of me does want to see if it holds up with how amazing it is in my head, so do take this recommendation with just a tiny, teensy, weensy little pinch of salt. But I have faith and I trust that it's going to hold up. This is an alternate history novel set in a world where the Ice Age continues and every winter humans go into hibernation. I mean, could we get any colder than that? Our main character is Charlie Worthing who joins up with a group of misfits called the Winter Consuls. Their job is to ensure the safety of all the people going into their deep winter sleep. And with viral dreams growing increasingly dangerous, night walkers on the loose, and other strange things going on, Charlie has plenty to deal with. Just thinking back, there are so many things that I love about this book. The detailed world building, the characterization, the sharp writing and humor, the funny quippy footnotes, the so-called historical excerpts that precede each chapter, and the fact that the main character is never gendered. It's the type of book that doesn't explain things ad nauseum. It just kind of lays it out and lets you figure it out for yourself. I mean, just listen to the first paragraph. Mrs. Tiffin could play the bazooki. 
Not Well and Only One Tune, Help Yourself by Tom Jones. She plucked the strings expertly but without emotion while staring blankly out of the train window at the ice and snow. She and I had not exchanged an intelligent word since we first met five hours before, and the reason was readily explained. Mrs. Tiffin was dead and had been for several years. But best of all, it brings all the cozy vibes to the point that at least once a week, I think back on how cozy it made me feel. Far and away, the most impactful nonfiction I've ever read is Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. How privileged are we as readers that a witness of the Mount Everest disaster was a super talented writer who lived to tell the tale? For those of you who may not be familiar with this book, Into Thin Air documents the death and destruction that struck Mount Everest when a storm battered its peak in May of 1996. Krakauer was there commissioned to report on the growing commercialization of Mount Everest, which is in itself a tragedy, and he ended up being one of the few survivors of his climbing expedition. I was addicted to this book. I wasn't bored for a second, even though a large part of it is dedicated to sharing the history and the culture surrounding the compelling, life-taking peak and the people that he met along the way. It brought me to tears on at least three occasions, and I still get chills when I think back on moments of it. If you like to get lost in thrilling nonfiction accounts and to read about people freezing and suffering and basically experiencing harrowing events while you're cozy inside, then this may be the book for you this winter. When I asked my family for winter book recommendations last year, this was the one my mom suggested. She's also the person who knitted this incredibly gorgeous Nordic sweater. And I frankly am just heartbroken for you that you can't see more of it. She also made many of the Christmas decorations that will feature in my next video. So yeah, shout out to my mom for bringing on the wintry vibes. I had heard about this next book a lot before I read it, but it wasn't until I was stuck on a three-hour delay wandering around an airport that I finally picked it up. Why? Yes, because of the cover. I do try to get most of my books secondhand, but I just can't resist a nice, beautiful cover that catches my eye. Plus, it's part of a series of, like, female heroines photographed by female photographers. Yes, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshvek. And how happy am I that I ended up buying it? I like a lot of different types of books, but there is a sweet spot in my heart for contemporary literary fiction written by and about women in which every word is perfectly chosen and placed to the point that the plot doesn't even matter and the characterization is just so I fell in love with this book. It's New York City in the year 2000 and we meet a nameless woman who has sailed through her life on the wings of her privilege. Now she wastes her days living off her parents' inheritance until she decides she's going to drug herself to sleep for a year. There's something about her spending endless days in her apartment, each blurring into the next with this heavy feeling of melancholia treated with movies put on repeat that makes it feel very cozy and wintry to me. But if that's not enough to make you want to read it when the weather outside is frightful, never fear. A good chunk of the book takes place in the winter and there are lots of cozy <laughs> descriptions of snowy, icy roads and blizzards and wintry scenes. This won't be a book for everyone, some might find it slow. I really liked it and if you too want to see a character break down before your very eyes this winter then I want to give a shout out to my sibling Evan for this next book. When I told them how much I loved Into Thin Air, they immediately said, you might really like The Cruelest Miles by Gay Salisbury and Lane Salisbury. And I do. Have you ever heard of Balto? The Alaskan Husky that had an animated movie made about him. Well, Balto basically stole the spotlight from all the other sled dog heroes that are featured in this book. Let me explain. Gnome, Alaska. 1925. Dr. Curtis Welch has spotted signs of an incredibly contagious and potentially deadly bacterial disease, diphtheria. 
Supplies of serum to treat the disease are running dangerously low, and as the town is sealed into a frigid Arctic winter, there is no way that medicine is going to arrive on time. An epidemic is inevitable. Enter sled dogs. In an epic race against time that was projected in headlines across America, a relay of dog sled teams raced nearly 700 miles, battling ice, blizzards, and unthinkably freezing temperatures. I get chills just thinking about it. On the back it says, the story that captivated America. Back in 1925, people watched the story unfold with bated breath, and a century later, the story certainly captivated me. Picture, if you will, these indescribably strong, powerful dogs sprinting for hours and hours on end in negative 50 degrees Celsius, sleds at their heels, streams of breath from their nostrils turning the air white. The question of animal exploitation aside, I'm glad that this book shed light on the incredible, extraordinary achievement of these dogs. Not only that, but it highlights the history surrounding Nome, Alaska, and what led to this stunning moment in time. Well-written, well-researched, page-turning, heartbreaking, and absolutely whirling with snow and ice. This book may just be the exciting historical account you need to get you through the bitter winter months. This next book has already made an appearance on my channel a few times, so I won't spend too much time on it. I just had to include The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Set in a cold, wintry setting in the northwestern United States, this chilling horror novel is sure to send shivers down your spine in more ways than one. In this book, four friends are forced to reckon with an entity that has come back to haunt them or should I say, hunt them, after a deadly event that took place a decade ago. I did a full book review of The Only Good Indians, which I will link here somewhere and in the description box down below. So if you want to hear why this was my favorite read of the spooky season, or if you just want to indulge in some cozy vibes, definitely check it out. I have to admit, this next one is a bit out there. It was the book my dad recommended. <laughs> when I asked for winter recommendations, and it 100% came through. It's HMS Ulysses by Alistair McQueen. I know, a 1955 historical fiction account of the Navy during World War II? Not my usual bedtime reading. But when I visited my parents in Denmark last Christmas, I wanted a book to just take off the shelf and read while I was there. So every evening in bed, I buried my nose in this book, and trust me, the winter vibes were undeniable. When I think back on this book, it gives me such a cozy feeling. Bundled up in bed, wind whistling past the windows, a cat or two purring at my feet. Perfection. That's not to say that this book sets out to be cozy. It certainly does not. This is a dark, brutal portrayal of men who are forced to fight in a war. It follows the crew of the HMS Ulysses, who have been sent to escort a vital supply convoy on its way to Murmansk, Russia. I feel like I'm speaking a different language. Already up against ferocious Arctic weather, it isn't long before they are face to face with a swarming German attack coming from air, sea, and submarine. As I have made evident, I am by no means a World War II expert, so a lot of it may have gone over my head, but that did not stop me from appreciating the ruthless drama in this book as our characters brave the bitter march of death and destruction. This book will definitely not be for everyone. The writing can be dense and the subject matter far removed from many of our experiences, but there was something about it that just made it such an enjoyable winter read for me. So I thought I'd include it for anyone else who might be interested. If you want to get lost at sea in the middle of harsh snowstorms and fiery battle, give this a try. When it comes to winter reads, I have a bizarre inclination toward ones that are set on Arctic sea excursions. There are a few that touch on this setting that I want to dig up and reread, including Where Would You Go, Bernadette, and the Danish novel Froden Smilas von Elisif Snate, or Smilas Sense of Snow. Sadly, these will have to wait until next winter because my TBR is full up. Stay tuned. Okay, people, I have two classics on this list. Chances are you have already read them, reread them, you might already be tired of them, but I am not. And that is why the next recommendation on my list is The 
Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Yes, the cozy, heartwarming story of four sisters navigating the challenges and wonders of their coming of age. I got this book from a friend for my 10th birthday, and it has sat on my shelf until I finally read it last Christmas, and I loved it. The cozy Christmas vibes are there from the very first line. Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents, grumbled Joe, lying on the rug. It's so dreadful to be poor. <laughs> and so on. Obviously, the book takes place over many years, so the cozy wintry vibes will not be present all the way through. I also personally enjoyed the first half quite a bit more than the second half. But regardless, the cozy New England setting, the vintage writing style. <laughs> Speaking of, can you believe this was published in 1868 and still holds up so well? The themes of transitioning from childhood to womanhood, they all blend together to create a perfect recipe that is sure to warm your heart through the cold winter months. So, you thought I could create a list of winter book recommendations and not include a Christmas classic? Think again! You all knew this was coming, and I'm not even sorry. Last, but certainly not least, we have the one, the only, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. This edition also includes the chimes, but in my opinion, it's just the worst version of A Christmas Carol, so you can ignore that one. The thing about these last two recommendations, Little Women and A Christmas Carol, is you have more than likely already consumed these stories in one form or another. For me, when I finally actually got around to reading these books last Christmas, I was delighted to find that they really lived up to the hype. I don't think I need to tell you about Ebenezer Scrooge and the four ghosts that haunt him on Christmas Eve and tell him to remedy his evil ways. But what I do need to tell you is if you like consuming this story in some shape or form every Christmas, then chances are you will enjoy this book. It is so, so cozy. Of course, you have to be prepared for writing dating back to 1843, but to me, that just added to the coziness. It was endearing, it was comforting, and above all, it was a perfect wintry book to get me in the holiday spirit. Well, my fellow bookworms, that concludes my list of winter book recommendations. I hope you enjoyed hearing about some of the books that have seen me through the bitter winter months. I'd love to know in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought, if you plan to read any of them, or if you have any other recommendations for books to add to my list. And if you liked this video, do hit the like button down below, share it with your friends who might enjoy some of these recommendations, and don't forget to subscribe so we can go on more literary adventures together. May your winter days be filled with pretty snow, plenty of hot cocoa, your coziest sweater, and the comforting pages of a good book. It's literally 4 p.m. and the sun has already set, so I'm gonna light some candles and settle in for a cozy night of reading. And I hope wherever you are in the world that you will have a chance to do the same soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.